Diesel Engineering is just one of the study courses offered soldiers by the Army Education and Welfare Service. Object of this and a dozen other courses is to give men and women a real start again when war is over. During the Christmas holidays at Wellington Technical College, these whacks from various Army departments catch up on typing. Now is the time for all good girls to get some aid for the future. And the future will provide some real opportunities for young men trained like this in radio engineering. Working along the same lines in the Army's own trades wing are men being trained first for immediate Army jobs. The urgency of war cuts down apprenticeship time. Instead of serving years of apprenticeship, only seven months training is needed here. Repairing canvas and splicing rope is skilled work that comes under the heading of equipment repairs. Once leather workers were needed in the Army for cavalry equipment. They are still needed for the mechanized cavalry of today. Blacksmiths, too, once dealt in horseshoes. Now they make the tools that go with tanks and trucks. To replace key men, wax are being taught electrical theory. But they don't get all their lessons in the lecture room. They put their theory into practice. At a motor works, men get basic training in motor engineering on demonstration models. They advance to the job of turning out trucks ready for the road again. Specialized training fits them for the army jobs of today. The changeover from war to peace won't find these men without some job they can do, and do well. First New Zealand nurses to go to the forward area in the Pacific, these nurses at New Caledonia are getting their packs up and making ready to embark. Just like a woman with her hat, she has to make sure her pack's on straight. Before their departure, Matron Hall of Auckland wishes them good luck. There's plenty of hard work ahead of them, but she knows they can do the job. New Zealand casualties in the Pacific War haven't so far been as numerous as those we suffered in the Middle East and Italy. But jungle conditions and the climate give nurses and doctors plenty to do besides looking after the wounded from battle. From the wharf, they step aboard a launch to go out to their ship. Like the men of the 3rd Div, they've got used to travel in the Pacific, where journeys are made mainly by sea and air. And the climate doesn't make it as pleasant as it looks. It's no picnic these nurses are bound for. The kitten on the launch got sore at the sight of women coming on board, and a little teasing doesn't help. Now they're all set to go. For these nurses, it's all just part of the job. They're typical of the thousands of nurses who are serving on our fighting fronts. They do their work cheerfully, and they do it well. They'll go anywhere they can help fighting men stay on their feet and keep on fighting. In conference here on Treasury Island, before pushing off for a spell of jungle fighting, are men of New Zealand's Pacific Division. Two years ago, the Jap, vaunted supreme in jungle warfare, had it all his own way. These are some of the men who rapidly learnt the art of jungle fighting and have helped to trump all the Jap's tricks. They move off. A steady pace must be maintained despite the jungle and the mud. Going on a Jap hunt isn't any fun. This is jungle patrol. Later they'll fan out to worry the Japs like terriers worrying rats. They move with caution, but keep pushing on, plodding along, waiting and watching. Anywhere around you, five yards away, a wily son of Tojo may lie in wait, completely hidden and just waiting to knock you off. You hear nothing, you see nothing until the bullet hits you. <laughs> Jungle fighting is man against man. There's no front line. The enemy may be all around. When progress stops, up come mortars to plaster his hideout and stir up something worth shooting. If 
the Japs still holding out, Bren guns open up to cover the advance, and mortars keep on smacking it in. of laborious training, learning how to lob grenades among the trees and all the other arts of jungle warfare has been the job of these New Zealanders. Superior skill and better tactics, dogged perseverance and infinite patience have made them masters of their trade. With speed and dash, they go in to finish off the job as they began, with precision and determination. the Jap is sitting tight, but these are some of the men who are on their toes and ready to beat him at every punching point. 